or seven bucks. <laughs> For, if you're married, before you buy a bed or a Bible or anything else, you buy one of these. I'm telling you, when you spray, everything, when you scrub things, uh, you had these old scrub brushes, terrible old things you hold in your hand, the three or four or five dollars, it will last you your whole life if you take it. Your hands are up off everything. And when you scrub anything, you know, there's a real interesting thing when you scrub anything, it's just, you think there's a science and everything else? When you scrub something back and forth in a circle, guess what? You scrub things only on one side, and people go over, so when you scrub, you always go east and west, east and west, north and south. I learned that shampoo and carpets. It's an interesting thing. People don't know that you go two ways, you, you'll clean tips. When I used to do carpets, I had no idea for years. That's stupid to do carpets where the machine went back and forth like this. So all we did to smooth the stuff on one side, and we just cleaned one side of the carpet top up. But when we learned to go back and forth and clean it two different directions, it made it made a whole difference to do it. So this is a so tools again, how to clean is almost what to clean with is almost as important as how to clean. Another great tool. What's one they tell you using all of hint and tip books? Don't throw it away, but use a what? <coughs> I have heard one thing out of you. <coughs> toothbrush. Ah, toothbrush. Boy, I don't know. Maybe we're not too visual. <laughs> Toothbrushes are about the worst thing you can probably use, but the idea is good. I don't know what these little grout brushes are. Two or three dollars, right? That is one of the finest tools. Pink on me. As you can feel, feel that top of that. Anytime you get a grout brush, you get in a grout, you brush brush, you can get around colors. You have to get little needles and get around stuff in corners. That little brush is just, you can't be without it. I mean, it's just the neatest little brush that goes along. It's, it's called a grout brush. And people see a brush like, people see a brush like this and they wonder what this brush is. Well, you know what it is? I'll tell you exactly what it is. In your lifetime, you're going to have, in your lifetime, you're going to have 55,000 spills or things. It starts when you're a baby, you spill, you spilled. Of course, your thing it goes. So the spot is on, stain is in. The spot is on, the stain is in. So if you get something with this new carpet, almost anything, even urine, if you get it up when it first gets on the carpet, you're generally going to get it up and it won't hurt. It sits on there it's like tomato juice or urine sits on there for 40, you know, half an hour or so, it becomes uranic acid, and guess what you have? You have damage, you have a yellow spot, and you're going to hate your dog and you're not going to get it up. It's going to just the way it's be. So the first thing, if you get a first thing, if you do, if you get a, if you get a spot or a spot or a spill, this is just, this is how to clean. I'm talking about the things that really matter. Some of you're going to spill something in the restaurant, your clothes or anything else. The worst thing people do is rub it in. So the best thing you can do is, well, I'm not going to try to get that because I got the microphone in my back pocket, but oh, let's get that out. The best thing you can do, by the way, I've painted most all my stuff 15 years. I keep, don't ever hire a painter unless their wallet looks like this. Mm -hmm. That shows they're a painter because they put the petty chisel back in their pocket. So you know, if they don't have a wallet look like it, they're not a very good painter. Okay, to do it. The American Express card probably is anything else. If you get anything on you or on your carpet or everything, probably the best thing to do is scrape the bulk out off. Like a kid's will get li lipstick on a couch, big chunks. So what do you do? You get lipstick remover, put it on, sure, it dissolves it. But as soon as it hits that big hunk, what does it do? Just sinks in and it's mess. Yeah, it makes it twice as big. So the first thing you do if the dog poops or something, I don't care if the you got a credit card, take it, scrape everything off. What is that? This is a whisk broom because the same hair, John. Well, I've never seen that before. That sure beats my wallet. Probably wouldn't smell near as bad as it does. If I, <laughs> I, uh, but, oh yeah, you can. But you can scrape and get the, the worst of the stuff off. And then after you do that, guess what you do? You take you take your spray bottle, take your cleaner. Johnny, I just grab, you know, cleaners are about all the same now. You, your dish soap, you can't figure it out. All-purpose cleaners, APC, and dish soap, well, almost all the same thing. So don't worry about getting everything particular. I mean, basic H, uh, uh, portion pack, Johnson's. Take, I, could, I must have challenged them all. I can line all the best guys up. Amway, I can line them all up. They're all-purpose cleaners, all on the big, long line. Take the color out and the smell out. I bet you the owners can spare all they can't tell there's any other guys. So they're all so close to the same. It's like the Ford and Chevys and the Kias. And when you really get them all down and you pool all the stuff together, the Hondas, they almost have the same one way or the other. They check out almost the same. So the first thing you do is spray. First thing you do is spray the spot and you wet the spot. Wherever the spot is on, you wet it down, put it on there with a the cleaner. Dish soap down is a safe all around thing. And then you don't rub the stupid thing. You lay the cloth down on the thing like that. You let it sit on there, the white cloth like that. Then you have your brush. Whatever you do, you do not brush the carpet. If you do, you're going to pill it. You'll get the, you'll get the, well, and then you have all these little afros, going, 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 all over the place, the afros. So you put it on your hands and knees, and you, the reason that looks like that and the slope is, 
you actually beat the tar out of it. Now when I do demonstrations, I put a big chunk of tar on the carpet like that, and you take it right out because you've paint thinner. You know, it's, we call it Stoddard solids. You just go, and you'll notice all of a sudden that that'll to it'll absorb it totally out of there to do it. And you'll keep doing it, and pretty soon you think you've got the stain out, but guess what? Marley, what do you see? You see it back again. It wicks. You know what wick means? It comes a wick. It wicks back up to the stuff. So guess what you do? You want to hand me one of my books? Next, what you do, you take the cloth, lay the cloth down on here like that, put it on like that, a white white cloth like that. You could give me two. I, don't use my books. Use Mary Ellen's Helpful Hint or you know one of the other authors, but don't use one of mine. Just you lay you lay the uh, Mary, you, Martha Stewart books. Use one of the others and you lay it down on there. Book on it. The next morning when you come back, it's the most interesting thing. All that stain and stuff that wicks up through the stuff will wick into your towel, and you'll pull your towel up. It'll be just dirty as heck on here, and the spot will be gone out. It's kind of neat to do it. The biggest mistake people make, the biggest mistake people make, uh, is they they get the stuff and they rub the stuff on there. So just just little tools to do that. Before we get up and walk around a minute, I want to tell you one one more quick little type of things. If I were you. I know they have some in the store. I don't know why. I go in millionaire houses, in the best houses in town. And guess what they have? I go into the sinks, and their stuff looks like the uh, little Safeway store. There's their terrible cardboard boxes and garbage. And open. For five dollars, four or five dollars, you can buy a caddy, a stupid caddy. You know, if you had your tools, would you ever put your tools all in big piles, or would you put your fishing stuff all in big piles, or you put your food? A stupid thing like this ought to cost you any money with your organized stuff, and plus, one of the worst things you're going to find, and you know, I get carried away in this, but wherever you set a bottle on a nice piece of furniture, guess what you're going to end up with? A ring. Very good. It's called a ring burn. A lot of those will never come out. You know, it burns the stuff on there to do that. I mean, you should have one of these on every single sink. So if they're, plus, they fit a man's hand as well as a woman's hand. This, this thing does everything else. So it's just another thing. I spent $100,000 to design that little clean card. I'm going to somebody get those in every grade school where the kids will do all the cleaning in the grade school. All the kids. I mean, we need one janitor in the school. And the rest of the school should be cleaned by the kids that make the mess. Let me give you another thing. I don't think even my people have ever seen this. But by the way, the sponges. I'll tell you another little thing. I'm getting carried away. But these things are really, really important on stuff like if you learn. You don't have to go through. This is a 3M sponge, and so is this one. What's the difference? The color's difference. What? Which one's the most aggressive? They're very good. The green one's the most aggressive. But you know, I one time didn't know that I, somebody I was using these green ones for a telephone building in Salt, South Salt Lake City. And guess what? After about two years, everything, all the chrome coming, I ruined a whole two floors of crane fixtures. You remember what a crane fixture cost in here? That's like gold. I mean, they're like the Cadillac stuff, and I had to replace those. They, Insure you for liability, but not stupidity. <laughs> this is too aggressive for most stuff. So in bathrooms, most of your sinks and your corian, and most of your stuff, you use the white scrubby sponges that are good enough. You scrub it and all the stuff like that. White is good. This is aggressive. If you had something that's pretty brick or you know hard to use this, and just these are little these are little things. But if it takes a lifetime to learn them, it's good. Now I people probably never even thought of this, but I'm going to tell you something that's so interesting. What does this look like? Flexi Very good. Drop. Good. You're coming along there. You, uh, you must be a senior and with a master's degree. No, just kidding. It's a drop of water. When you shower, on your shower gets these. When you get your windows, they get these. A drop of water comes. Well, what a lot of people don't realize is it's a drop of water. When it dries, when a drop of water dries, have you ever noticed on a drinking fountain or on everything, what do you see? You see that ring? That is the that is the mineral that was in the water. When it goes down, it doesn't go away. The mineral has to collect. So the mineral on the bottom of the drop it sags. And so the next time, this this is this is really high tech stuff here. The next time you do it, my visuals aren't that great. But the next time you you shower, and the next time, the next time, the water comes down and stops in that very same place. The mineral that was in the water comes back and stays in that very same place. See how that is right there? You do that for about six months or six years, or irrigate your lawn six, for six months, and pretty soon, guess what you have? You have a thing. Does that look familiar? You ever looked up close at hard water? I have hard water. You look on your shower, you look on your sink, and guess what it looks like? 
exactly what it looks like. It's got that lower shape like that. Now you've got a cement problem. That is actually buildup. You try to clean it, and it'll look really good, and you clean it. As soon as it dries, what does it appear? Just like that. So now you've got to, have to do something. You've got to absorb, you've got to absorb this. You've got to absor dissolve it. And that's what shower cleaners come in, phosphoric acid. You're sitting in your shower. So if you clean your shower regularly, squeeze and everything, you don't get this too much or in your toilet. The same thing comes in your toilet. I'm going to show you a couple of things when we, we, we do that. We'll get up and go to the toilet stuff. So, you're going to love this thing so much, you can take it to church with you. Okay, we're going over to the toilet right now. Can you guys get up? Can you, can you can follow me. I'll show you two things. I think we got a toilet. I've got, I've got so many stories about this. I, could, I even have a, a beautiful toilet suitcase I carry all over the world and everything else. So you go up to the toilet, and you have your toilet, you've used it, and you use it, and use it. Pretty soon, when that water sets in that toilet for a very long time, guess what happens? So people, I'll, I'll tell you what, people go, they leave their toilet like this, and they go to Phoenix. And they come back after two or three months in Phoenix, what do they have? They have a huge ring. Very good, they have a huge ring. What's that, where does it come from? So I just taught you in there, when the water evaporates on that toilet type, right? It collects on the side, and that's where the ring comes from. In fact, people are learning this. They just put a, uh, a piece of uh, wax paper over that, or plastic over that. They get back, their toilet will be perfect. They didn't have any evaporation. The trouble is, remember to turn on your lights before you use your toilet. It would be a disaster, I'll tell you that, to do it. So I get a lot of toilets that people don't know what it is, so they try to get the ring out. And you have the, you have the pumice stones, which these things, what they publish your teeth with and everything else, are, are pretty hard to cover. But they're only hardness of two, that's a hardness of seven, so generally they won't scratch it. To do the toilet won't scratch it. These are new and they're called screens. Somebody thought of these, a lady, one of you guys thought it should. You should have thought of it. You have to do college. Every kind of a sandpaper, you have to clean it, everything else. So what I find out when you, when you clean your toilet regularly, I mean, it's very simple when you clean you regularly. I just have that spray bottle of all-purpose cleaner. I clean my, when I clean my toilet, I just spray around the back, and I spray the sides, and spray this, spray this where people sit. I mean, this is not where you get germs. You might get them right here. I spray this, and spray the top of the wipe. That's basically clean the toilet. But inside of the toilet, every six months, that water, even though it sets in there, will start getting ugly in my toilet. So what do you do when you come up to your toilet? You have bowl cleaner. This is acid bowl cleaner, bad stuff. It's an acid. It's in this holder. Be sure to get a holder like this. Because when you set it on the shelf, it's not going to leave a ring burn or anything else, but it's pretty safe. And uh, I've, got my, I've got, even got a good toilet thing. I've been using it for a drum for the kids. So you come up to the toilet like that, and you, and you sit around clean inside the toilet. That rim right there, there's a little light. I don't know if you can see my little light, but there's a light you hold under the toilet, and you see the rim underneath there. It's like a dental light. And it gets all these little holes under here get full. So you go up to your toilet, and you don't. Most people go up to their toilet, and they take this thing, and they go, glug, 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 you, you've got keeling over and everything wrong. You dilute it. It's not any good. So first thing you do is go to your toilet, get down your toilet, and go. Okay, 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 okay. You'll drive the, well, all wall water out of that toilet. It's as neat as can be. Then I take this and I wring this out just like this. I take my bowl and I put just drink, 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 drink. Just put a little bit of a uh, little bit of bowl cleaner on here. And then I go to back up under and wipe around in here. That that bowl cleaner will just take this about almost instantly. So if your ring is out, most of the time I take your ring is out. Then I use a piece of I, I use I use a piece of pumice, pumice stone and blot it out and everything else to clean the toilet. And then I flush. Make sure you flush the toilet. You never leave that stuff in the toilet. Somebody uses it might splash and damage it. These are these are really handy little things. I got them for drums over in the museum. I got the drums the kids use. That's that's why. Anything anything to do with anything to do with toilets. If you guys wanted some design problems, by the way. Where's my guy? Give me a make make your house book, quick. Why is that one fluffy and those ones are like bristles? Because I don't know why I've had this. Oh, there it is. Oh, there. I didn't see my little cup and I put it back on. What's a hairdo we have? You know, if you have that, you have your hairdo stuff like that, you look, look pretty good. You know, again, again, these are professional tools. That's what this whole store. That's been my whole theme. Is I mean, you as homemakers are smarter, smarter than my janitors. No, the make your house do the housework. Uh, the, the, I mean, we're talking about all the principles of clean. You have all the different stuff. So you, you know, we got the kit and the bowl cleaner. But this way, you'll hardly use any bowl cleaner. 
one of these will last you almost a year. But the way other people do it, they, but every month they come and get a new thing. This, this thing. Here's an it teaches some almost more, almost more principles, almost more principles than what, you know, how to clean stuff is how not to clean stuff. For years, women come up to me and say, who built this house? A man? It really offended me because I built a beautiful maintenance-free house in Hawaii and I built one in, in Sun Valley, Idaho and built it myself. And so I was offended for about 10 years then I started listening to the, to the Judians and everybody. And guess what? <laughs> <laughs> women are smarter than architects and, and most of them women if they want. So my daughter and I did a book on Make Your House to the House where all of the things you can build in a house so you don't have to clean it. Now just think of this. So you get really good. Who cares if you're really, really, really good at cleaning and fastening? Better if you don't have to do it at all, and you're going to save the environment, and not use the cleaner and everything else. So, like those stagecoaches, I designed. I designed those for the bed, so if the kids could put nothing under the bed, and those stagecoaches, the kids could play in the room, and they grew up back, acted like humans. I put human beds in there to and that stuff, but all the stuff. So you can design, clean out, and nothing, nothing is much worse than a glass shower. I mean, put a, I mean, get a two-dollar shower curtain and throw it away after four years and do it everything. You know, people get in there and get a shower and they'll clean out. I mean, who goes sees your shower? Who's looking in your shower anyway? You know, there's just some things. When you design a house, you can, you can, build, these, you can build these things in so that, so that they uh, don't even on the floor. All my, in my white house, all the toilets are wall hung. All the things are into Everything's wall hung and everything. You can, you can do that. I really encourage you to do that. So that's what you're going to school for is to do stuff faster, better, quicker, and smarter than you did before. And that's basically all I try to teach clean, and that's what our store is. We got other stuff we have in there to do this. Everything you do, you have options. Other than that, the toilets, bathrooms, I don't use the stuff on the mirrors. I use just glass cleaner, the evaporating glass cleaner on the mirrors and everything else. No, say to be no, no miracle. This is just a, this is just a mild acid is all it is. And also on your window, if it's hard water on your windows, and you just use a little acid on the window that kills it, kills it off like that to do it. So everything, else. but that's what that's what this is. And that's all about for toilets and bathrooms. Wipe around the floors. Men miss the toilet all the time. Make men clean all the make men do all the cleaning of all the toilets and everything else they do. Do it. Another another big uh, another biggie that we're doing is over here. Is follow me over here. This is this is a this is really biggie. You know, you can, people always like their hands on how to clean stuff. They really want how to clean stuff fast and easy and everything else. But if I can teach you not to have to clean it at all. That's what to do because you got time to love and do and, and have. It. If you're spending time cleaning all the time, I mean, who care? Who wants to spend all their time eating up chemicals and wearing out carpets and everything? I mean, the, fat, the less you have to clean, the better off you have to do. I have over in this whole world. There's nothing three blocks away from here. How many have been to the museum? You see the vacuums over there. I've got probably 500 of those pre-electrics. Most people have two. So we, so we may study of vacuums, but I've worn out a lot of these. We use hundreds of these every night, and there's all sorts of them. There must be 700 vacuum companies. Everybody has their favorites. You know, I, I show everybody the attachments for the Kirby, and I say, here's a nose picker, a shoelace stretcher, a gopher killer, a cockroach groomer, and a really Mr. Athlete. And people are so gullible, you know, they believe anything you have. So you get all sorts of, you get all sorts of vacuums. Number one, I don't like tank vacuums. I'm just giving you my opinion after cleaning 60 years. It's like dragging a dead pick or dead sheep through the house on the end of a rope. <laughs> so if you, got a, if you get a little one, buy a little tiny one like that so you can carry in your hand and go around and get little corners. But I like upright vacuums. There's a whole reason that things, you know, we worry about suction. We worry about suction on vacuums. I can't even find a, ho I can't even find a free hose anywhere. Oh, there's one right there. These things have a lot of suction. You see all sorts of tricks with these type of vacuums they have. I had a guy once that went our big one big vacuum. We were doing stores. We was hooked up to a Chevrolet engine. He was dinging around with it. You know how you do that shit, doing all that stuff with the vacuum. Put it, put it up to his chin and locked on his chin. <laughs> and he couldn't get it off. He had 300 foot. Ah! Oh, I got screaming with a big vacuum. Sucked a big hickey on his chin for a week. And the guy couldn't ever think So everybody says, what kind of vacuum I, uh, you have? What is the best? What is everything else? And there's not that much. There's just a few techniques of vacuuming that if people do, and I, I personally like this, I mean, it's five, six hundred, seven hundred dollar vacuums. They'll probably shoot me in here for this, and you get the mealies and all the best stuff. But I really like this old, this an old standard Eureka that we use, and you can beat them up, you can ride them, you can throw them down the chutes and everything else. And they're, they're about three hundred dollars, and they're really good big old vacuums. And now they have bags that are really good in them and everything else. The reason you get a commercial one, if you look at this long length of that cord, I can plug it in clear outside. The new vacuums you get at home, you get a home vacuum. The cord is about 20 foot long, and you're moving it, and moving it, and moving it. So I'm really get, I'm really buy a good commercial vacuum. You get to spend the $500. And 
And people, people a lot of times will do this. Two things in vacuuming. Most people will have a tendency to do this. Way too fast. So you go over there, you can go over this three times like this fast. And that'll take you a long time. This is twice as fast to do this like this, right? This speed. That thing bounces the carpet and then the brush hits both ways and you pull it back and you go it. Another thing is this cord. People fight this stupid cord. <laughs> Everything else. So why why do they fight it? Because when they vacuum the carpet, they vacuum into the carpet. Into the they vacuum into the room like this. That's the way you should do it, and then back out, but what do people do? They get they go all the way in the room and think they don't want to leave their footprints. So they vacuum, they walk, walk over the cord and they vacuum, they hit and they vacuum backward and they fall and they stumble and everything else. Who cares if there's some rump prints in your carpet or two finger, uh, two hoof prints while coming out, you know, do whatever is fast to do. Another thing is, this has a, I find this really interesting, somebody will buy this vacuum, it's a really good brush, this beater bar is really important on the bottom of this thing. A beater bar on a vacuum is just super, super important. It beats the thing like this and it's got a little, it's got a little rubber on the thing where it goes in here. Well, you think I hadn't done this for a long time, right? This is so interesting. You can see the fan and everything. You see this little thing turns around? Well, this is a, it goes the right way, then the beater goes this way like this. But when you put that belt on, if you put this belt on the other way, it looks just exactly the same. Guess what it does? It reverses the beater bar. So the beater bar, instead of doing this as you go, it's going. Now I see people get in the living room, they got that beater on backwards, they, they go in and buy a brand new vacuum. They come in here and start thing, and all that stuff is kicked ahead and they're herding that stuff. They're just herding all that stuff like a herd of cows. They go, ah, and they're trying to get the stuff. <laughs> finally, they finally get in a corner it, and they go, Rah! You know, like on the stuff like that, and it shoots off the wall and finds out there, and they say, oh, my vacuum is broken and everything. Little, little tiny things, but you can, you put, you know how to put this back on, right? You know, try to try to get on. You can vacuum, but the cord makes a real, the cord makes a real, real difference on the vacuum. You can vacuum fast. Again, I still like the little ones, and I like, and you have all sorts of bags, but the bags now are so, so good. Anybody know what a rainbow is? It's a vacuum, right? It's a vacuum, a vacuum for water. They're about $2,000. Everybody says they're the best vacuum for uh, air barn after, you know, they, they capture all the air that comes through. Some of these vacuums, you go, you see the air all coming. And I thought, so I always thought that because they cost a lot. But guess what? I saw a study from the University of Virginia that showed those vacuums, those stupid vacuums that showed them of 13 and done. They were the worst ones. Said, How could that be going through water? So I was in a Hoover factory and the guy took a brand new rainbow, had a bunch of powder. Stuck it in the powder. Guess what? Powder came out the other. Some powder came out the other side. How could that happen? How does how does air go through water? In bubbles. So if anything was expended in the middle, guess what? It goes out the middle. They were the worst. So, so you learn a lot. So just get a pay good, get a good vacuum. Vacuums are like appliances now. There's no magic. All TVs full of the sharks and full of the Dysons. Dyson. <coughs> Dyson's done unbelievable. You're a vacuum repair guy, right? Yep. Dyson has done advertisements like you cannot believe. I traveled for Hoover, traveled for Eureka, and did a lot of stuff. They paid me two grand a day to do, you know, I did all that stuff. But guess what? The, uh, they probably took 2% or 1% of the market we got. After all that work and all that money, Dyson took 32% of the market because he just advertised. He's selling a $150 vacuum for $400, but he, he marketed it. So you guys, things that are marketed are just... They, they just blow you away to do it. But, so any of that stuff you do, whatever's cheap, whatever, whatever is easy to find. If you get something too fancy or too new or anything else, I'm I'm kind of Alexander Pope. Be not the first by whom the newest tried, nor the last to lay the older side. I'm kind of from that old school to do that. But you can see that you see the mat right here that's over there on the inside. They have an outside. That's those cloth mats like they what they have. Okay, come on, I'll give you a list as we kind of walk around and finish up. Uh,